this a confusing item for you? Do you want to rub your face on it? This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Do you ever make the mistake of going on Pinterest where you are then accosted by an image that no matter what you do will just not leave your melon? That is the mistake that I make on a weekly basis and it's also the entire premise of this channel. The image that knocked me over and stole my lunch money this week is this. It's just so cute and spooky at the same time. Ah. The B plot to this week's episode is that I have also inadvertently started a tradition on this channel where every October I make a different themed witch costume. As you may have guessed that is where this comedically large hat comes from. I made this the first year back in 2021. I made this one last year. So since this cutesy pastel pink image is so different from my usual style because I have the propensity for dressing like a vampire, I thought this would be a super fun premise for this year's witch costume. So now my friends, we away to the thrift store. Get on losers, we're going shopping! <laughs> Hi there, we are at the thrift store. So mainly I'm just gonna go in here, peruse the fabrics, peruse the foliage and just like the miscellaneous section. Find some stuff that I can work with. I'm very excited. Let's do it. Once inside, I was greeted by many fandangles of the spooky persuasion. But let's try to stay focused on fabric despite the obvious distraction that is Tony and his house. I found some green fabric, some floral fabric, brocade that's kinda nice, a pink sheet that was definitely a contender, and this was mostly there to tempt me with the notion of turning myself into Hal's moving bedroom. Again. <laughs> I said Hal's moving bedroom instead of Hal's moving castle. There was also this, which is something that already looks like it would be in my bedroom, but let's stay focused here. After finding some witchy hearts and deliberating over which blanket would be sacrificed to this week's project, I think I had what I needed. To the Dollar Tree. After being welcomed in by the guards, gourds if you're using the proper dialect, I made my way past this horror show to the good stuff and grabbed some white pastel and cream pumpkins and a couple of flowers to match. All right, let's figure out what we are going to make with all of this. For this design, I wanted to do a medium-sized pointy witch hat, a full circle capelet, and a broom. I wanted to keep the color palette very pastel pink and white with a few hints of pastel green and decorate all of this with florals and pumpkins and other spooky things. I was very inspired by every single one of these costumes on my Pinterest board, so I wanted to do something similar while putting my own spin on it, and I definitely struggled to really settle on a design. My cruel mistress and decisiveness rears her ugly head again. I don't know why this design was so difficult for me to come up with. I think it was my perfectionism and indecisiveness coming up against each other and just causing a giant tidal wave of uh, but I think I've gotten it to a pretty decent place. Um, at least to a place of my favorite part of a design. We'll figure it out later. But if for some reason you do want to view this design up just a little bit closer, it is live on my costume design portfolio, which as always is hosted by this video sponsor, Squarespace. I recently gave my Squarespace site a fresh coat of paint to make it feel a little bit more updated, a little bit more me. Thanks to their intuitive drag and drop system, it was a breeze to update. And whenever I first made the site, it was a breeze to create. It only took me about an hour, and I could choose from a wide selection of gorgeous, professionally designed templates that are also fully customizable. You can control the colors of your site, the font options, even the kind of media that displays on your page to really give it a sense of identity. And if you want to make a portfolio like mine, Squarespace's fluid engine allows you to make an appealing gallery with one click by arranging all of your pieces automatically after you upload them. And one of my favorite things about Squarespace is that you can really customize your selection of website pages to suit the unique needs of your site. I've got an extra costume design portfolio Portfolio. I have a page for character profiles. I have a private portfolio to submit to artist alleys at conventions. Squarespace also has a highly integrated e-commerce platform and they have all of the features that you would need to sell, whether you're a more casual seller like me or running a complicated business. So if you're in the market for a website or portfolio, I don't know, maybe you want to design a super cute pastel pink website or portfolio, you can do that with Squarespace. And you can head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace space as always for sponsoring this week's video. Now let's get back to my pursuit of looking like a freshly baked cream puff. So here are the results of our little thrifting excursion. Now you might have noticed that I didn't thrift a pink base fabric and that's because in classic Kira fashion I forgot that I already had all of this. Other than that in the way of fabric we have some fur trim stuff. I just thrifted a blanket for that. I also have this little boa thing. I'm not sure what it is. Shiny brocade. It's got some nice trim on it as well. We've got some materials for a little witchy broom slash staff. Very important pink spray paint. And in the way of accessories, I got a couple things of flowers here. I got an assortment of little gourds. So one thing I do not have is a broomstick staff for this. So I do say a little bit of foraging is in order. I think we found
on our stick. So I am either thinking something like that or something like that. I haven't decided yet, but that's a decision for later, Kira. First up, we gotta pattern this out. As cute as I feel, I need to slip into something a little bit more comfortable. That's better. I was going to base this on my existing witch hat pattern, but this old brim was definitely a lot bigger than I wanted it to be. Not the look we're going for here. So I adapted that old pattern for the new design. I used the same head size, measured out a better brim width, and added a subtle petal motif. I wanted a shorter cone for this one, so now we've got to work a little rise over run magic to pattern that out. And yes, regrettably, that does mean some math, but it's okay. It's just a little math, you're gonna be fine. I'm getting most of my information from the Delia Creates Witch Hat tutorial, which I will link below. I highly recommend it. I wanted my cone height to be about 11 inches tall. You're like a narwhal. So the equation to find the slope of that is this mathematical salad, and the measurement I need is the square root of that. Mine ended up being about 12 inches, so I drew that out from a single point, with the bottom edge measurement being roughly equal to my head circumference, plus about half an inch. And bam, there you go, witch hat pattern. Me lady. I patterned the capelet the exact same way I would a circled skirt. That's right, sewing is a lie, nothing is real. I got a length measurement and a neck hole measurement, which of course I divided by pi to find the diameter. I do want to stop and acknowledge that this is a confusing term of phrase. You never divide this pi, only this pi which I then marked out directly on my fabric because I love taking risks. And I did so, of course, by marking the radius of the neck hole and then fanning out the length with my measuring tape. I then fed that big old pie to my scissors because they work hard and they deserve some. To get the top layer of my capelet, I did the exact same thing, but thinner. Think a thin crust pizza as opposed to a deep dish. Then I set my scissors in for seconds, thirds, fourths, and wait, I'm not done, fifths and sixths. Hi, so right now I'm trying to figure out how to do these sort of segmented leaf lines on the capelet itself. I guess I'm trying to also make it vaguely emulate a pumpkin. Just trying to put as many Halloween references into this as possible. So I have tried to go about doing that, both with pinning the like fuzzy inside layer together with the fashion layer, sewing straight lines down to try to like, I guess basically use this as batting. I have also tried to go in and hand embroider those lines on. And in both cases, this satin fabric just looks real bad. I have ripped all that out. Regrettable, but this is a trial and error process this week. Think instead what I'm going to do. Sandwich a tiny little seam this layer. Sew it down, right sides together like this, and then flip it. And then it'll basically be like it was patterned in. I think that will give a much cleaner seam and give me the effect that I'm going for. Okay, I think I have more or less solved my stitching problem. I've also done the same thing to the little over capelet and to the hat as well. Also went into the hat and just add some little leaf vein stitching. I think that turned out super cute. Also been trying to do the same thing on this little over capelet here. Undecided about whether or not I like it because this needs some kind of like supportive layer in it to make that work. The hat has a layer of felt to make it more structural so that this like, I don't know, kind of ugly fabric warping doesn't happen. But I don't think I have anything on hand for this that would like still give it a nice drape. I don't know, I like <laughs> really haven't decided what I want to line this with yet. Okay, forgive my hair. It's giving Farrah Fawcett bedhead, but there are a couple of these decorations that I have where I have no idea how they're going to take the paint. So I'm gonna do a quick little pink paint test to see how they take this. That should give me a good idea of how much work I'm gonna have to do later on. project has been just a lot of weird trial and error. That's why I haven't really been filming as much as I normally do. L let me give you an update on the design itself. So I discovered this still in my fabric stash. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm about to look really stupid, but hear me out. For the tie under the neck. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. The tie under the neck, this. This is my year, you guys. I'm gonna stop looking like a sad basset hound whenever I wear things on my head instead of a white fabric. The, to, 
bear with me, this is about to make more sense. Curly bangs, long hair extensions. I look stupid right now, yes. Trust the process. Just trust the process. That's what I do every single day of my life. So I'm thinking to pair with that, make little matching leaves to put on the hat and then also maybe coming off of the mini capelet. I've also obtained lace trim and then little leaf trim that matches the green. I think this is so cute. I'm probably going to trim the front seam of the capelet with this. Also to drape off of a couple of places, little pink beading. <laughs> Can you tell I'm having entirely too much fun with this? The main thing I have left is just to assemble everything. I think I'll know more once the pieces are actually together. I think next I'm just gonna focus on finishing up the hat and then I've never sewn on any kind of fuzzy trim before. This is going to be a new experience for me. For the hat, I began by placing the comb piece right sides together and I sewed down on that line and flipped it inside out so that you have a nice little comb. Look at that, wow. It's about the cones. I then cut another layer of brocade to be the bottom lining, and I sewed that up right sides together again. I know you don't normally do this way, but I am too lazy to do it the other way. Anyways, I flipped that back inside out again, and then I pinned and sewed this lovely trim on the outside, uh, rendering that stuff kind of useless. I finished the inside edge by hand sewing a little bit of binding to that. I also pretty love it. And then I hand sewed on those ties that make me kind of look like a babushka cat. Corporate wants you to find the difference between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Next, we were finally on to assembling the capelet. Six hours later. All right, capelet pit. And I still have to sew it. And there you go, it looks pretty good. All the hours of work, <laughs> worth it. I did the same with the smaller capelet. It sucked less the second time, but not by that much. Oh, but the kitty likes it. That means it's all worth it. I also sewed on that green trim that I mentioned before. And look at this shot. It has absolutely no time effects applied to it. And now the hat and both capelets are more or less assembled, and now we can finally dig into the juicy stuff. Hello, and welcome to the final day. There is so much to do today. I have basically all of the decorating still left to do, a little bit of sculpting. But I did more or less finish up the capelets last night, but I didn't finish up the color area because there is a little bit of a deliberation that I wanted to sleep on. So I haven't finished up the color section yet because I am once again thinking about making these separates. I think that they are super cute together, but it is a lot. And I mentioned in the intro that this is not necessarily my style. Like it's something that I really want to make and experiment around with and I personally think the aesthetic is super super cute so this whole time as I've been making this I have kind of had a friend of mine Ellie in mind to give this costume to whenever I'm finally done with it and I think if I permanently attach this top collar piece the one that's going to have more embellishment and more themed items on it to the bottom piece it would make it permanently more of a costume Ellie is also just a whole lot more minimal than I am whenever it comes to the things that, that she likes to wear so I think it would also be better if my too muchness was not necessarily enforced on this costume piece. It's also gonna be a fun challenge for me to decorate this in a way that's like well balanced and tasteful and not just like, hey, just throw everything on there. I like it, who cares, you know? So other than that, to start us off, I don't have a ton of time today, but I do wanna do a little bit of sculpting. So I already have a lot of cute stuff to work with. And again, I'm gonna keep this a little bit more minimal. So I don't think I need to sculpt too much, but something that I think would be super cute would be if I I added some little bats. Bat? First of all, I kind of want to put a little bat in this basket. A basket, if you will. Then I'm thinking about maybe doing a bat or something else cute for the hat, something that's more of an animal. A spider would also be kind of cute. I don't know how good I would be at sculpting a spider. Um, I guess you never know until you try. And finally, I think I want to do another bat or a skull or something else cutesy to go on the clasp for the top capelet. And it's just meant to be a focal point 
for the whole thing to make it really feel like this is pink, but make no mistake, this is a spooky Halloween costume. So without any more further ado for this, I am going to be using my flower clay again. Um, it smells like absolute death. It smells like how drinking straight vinegar feels. This is the fastest drying clay that I have. So here we have our finished little bag. I think it turned out really cute. Not anatomically correct, but uh, it shall serve our purposes just fine. Staple of any Halloween season, an anatomically incorrect bat skull. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the novelty Halloween aisle at Walmart. And our ensemble is obviously not complete without a wrong spider. It looks okay. It's just mostly a little bit wrong. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you want to rub your face on it? She doesn't. Is this a confusing item for you? You don't like how it smells, huh? Neither do I. It smells like how drinking straight vinegar feels. So now I think the first step to finishing up the decorating is to focus on how I'm going to do this broom. I think I've decided that I want to do it like this. That way I can kind of wind some like floral ribbon around here. And if I do it on this side, it also should have like multiple points of contact to keep this in place. This is also more like structurally sound down here. Then I can like hold it kind of by this side. <laughs> The executive producer was, of course, very entertained by this process. I gave the exposed wood on the stick a clear enamel finish so it doesn't look like I just brought a random tree branch into the house. Uh, which of course I did. Six hours later. And the sculptures also eventually got a base coat of clear pink paint. <laughs> What is this voice I started doing? Once that was dry, I finished the class piece off by attaching some leftover alligator clips to both sides with some strands of pink beads. I glued some lace around the head. Ah, oh, kinda reminds me of someone else I know. Added a few decorative bits of filigree and painted the eye sockets black as to reflect the soul of the dead creature. Finishing off with some pearl beads to emulate the glow of a lingering demonic force. I also painted the eyes black on the other bat with a black gloss and added a very subtle purple wash. The spider also got some pearl eyes which I completely neglected to show on camera. And now it's time to stop procrastinating and finish up the colors. Now it's time. Now Let's finish up the colors already. The color of the longer capelet was just finished off with a little homemade binding that came from the same fabric I used on the hat ties. And that was accented with a little lace on top to make the neckline a little more interesting if it's worn on its own. Bam, look at that. That wasn't so hard, was it? All that agonizing over nothing. We talked about this. You always do this. The shorter capelet got some fur trim that came from this thrifted thing. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it already came with an edge that I could use to sew it on, and I'm lazy, so I did that. Did I mention this fabric was thick and annoying? <laughs> Not unlike myself. For the ties on that, I took some scrap lace and sewed it to either side, and I also made some fabric leaves out of that brocade to tie the hat and cape together. I also made this fabric leaf earlier, and I meant to make more of these, but this one was so annoying to make that I couldn't be bothered. Okay, we are almost done. Just gotta glue everything on. <laughs>
turned out looking super cute, but I have absolutely no idea what it looks like on yet. So you know what time it is. Uh, let's see what it looks like on. I really should come up with something more interesting to say at this part in a video. Before we close out, I did want to highlight the versatility of my creation. First up, you can just wear the hat with the cute dress. Adorable. A full costume already. We got the accessories. Very cute. For more of a simplistic look, you can go for just the under capelet. And of course, the capelet can just be worn on its own and you just become a very well-dressed, non-magical human. But we can't forget, maybe you're wearing a pretty dress, you don't want to cover the dress up. You can just wear the shorter caper and show off a lot more of your luxurious frock. But of course, who can forget which costume classic? It's cute, it's intentional, and it is certainly the costume that I made in this video. Okay, all jokes aside, it is, <laughs> it came out really cute. I'm really happy with it. Hi, this turned out so cute. I'm obsessed. Like I said, this is not my usual aesthetic, but boy is it fun to wear. <laughs> Whenever I said freshly baked cream puff, apparently I wasn't exaggerating. That is exactly what I look like right now. Uh, if you don't know what's V for Halloween this year, do some kind of pastel spooky thing because oh, it hits. I have to admit, I'm going to have a really, really difficult time letting go of this costume, but if I, with my dark gothic soul, love it this much, I know that my Barbie core pastel friend Ellie is going to love it even more. So I'll post a reel or something like that whenever I do the photo shoot. But as always, thank you for watching. I know this wasn't the spookiest video, but it's still very seasonal, I would say. As always, if you want to support me on Patreon and see what I'm up to behind the scenes, you can subscribe to that for as low as $1 a month. And most importantly, the biggest thanks for this video and the boost of serotonin that I'm feeling right now goes to my patrons and especially my executive producers. Liana, Armler Jean, Anubix, Breeza, Elizabeth Smith, Bean the Bread, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, Bobo McFoe, Freya Wolf, Gravity Drop, Sweet Winter Garden, Katie, Hypnos, India Gloom, Enozine, Megan Penland, Meeks Hunter, Eloquent Silence, Low Visa, Thea Maia, Agent Dot Sketchy, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Shay Lee, Zyle S, Dodo, Cat, Small Underscore Creeper, Francesca Sliwa, Freedom and Gus Gus, Sam Alama Ding Dong, Rose Coffrick, Rose Jaconi, Phoenix, Brian, The Cat Buses Early, and and Miss Wicked. Does it feel like she genuinely likes this? I mean, is this not the vision of a queen? Look at that.